Now, we did a two-level OLIF procedure, transcambine OLIF. When did you do that surgery? It was, uh, I think, August of 2017. So about three years ago, well, more, a little, mm -hmm. actually Almost three and a half, three and a half years ago. And then you had, before the surgery, you had back pain and leg pain, correct? Yes. How were you, like, you know, immediately after the surgery, how were you the first year after the surgery? Can you tell me that? The, the back pain um, had improved. It was occasional, mm -hmm. just depending on what a person would do. Yeah. Um, but the occasional times when it was extreme, mm -hmm. it could be very extreme, um, yeah. similar to, to um, when I first got hurt. Yeah, yeah. Because the first surgery that another doctor performed was a three-level... Uh, Decompression. Yeah, okay. and uh, that kind of peaked and then started to drop off, mm -hmm. and then we went with your procedure, and it's a little bit more stabilized. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not 100%. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, uh, so, it was an improvement. Yeah, and you were going the right direction, but then... About two years after the surgery, no, first of all, after our surgery, your skin was good, no sign of infection, everything was perfect regarding the incision and the wound and so on. But two years after the surgery, something happened. Tell me. We what? started getting infections back there that were like boils or big pimples, mm -hmm. and they were massive and very painful, mm -hmm. and for no re understanding reason why. Did you have any kind of dental procedure or superficial infection, UTI, before? No. So, for no obvious purpose, all of a sudden you start having this superficial skin infection. Mm -hmm. And we actually went and cut that infection out superficially. In May. Uh, in May. And I, about what? About one, and a, one year ago, one and a half year ago, something like that. It the was first May, time? May, May, of, May of last year. Yeah. And then... And then now, when I did the first surgery and I go, when they cut the skin out, underneath, on the what we call fascia, where it's on top of the muscle, everything was perfect. There was no hole. There was no infection. So I stopped there. But then the infection came back again. And over and over and yeah. over. It came back just about almost monthly. Yeah. And so it was getting good and then it was breaking out again. It was getting good and then breaking out again. What means that there is a place that there is a, and we got even CAT scan. It didn't show any infection down there. But after that, repeating so many patterns, the only way that uh, we in medicine can explain that is there is a place that there's an infection that doesn't die out. It just expands and push itself out and so on. And so I decided to go and take the hardware out because mm -hmm. the hardware is dead tissue. Right. Our immune cells don't get easily to that. And in an infection that doesn't go away, the best thing to do to take the hardware away. And um, lo and behold, when I went there the, for the, uh, the second inf uh, uh, surgery, I believe that I took the hardware out and it was infection there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that is not an infection from the surgery. This is a process that we call seeding, meaning that you, and sometimes it's for dental procedures, sometimes it's for no good reason, sometimes it's such a minor in, you know, incision, in the, just a cut in the finger. When this bacteria get into our blood, they go everywhere. And if you have a hardware, that hardware could be anywhere. If they get there, your immune cells cannot get there easily. So meaning that it never dies out. Right. So, so it wasn't a primary infection of the surgery, but it was a seeding of the hardware that uh, it was... And your immune system did a good job on encapsulating it, but once in a while the pressure would build up, it just would release that, and your it would just release through the skin, and your body would react react yeah. to that. So, but then we took the hardware out, then yeah. your immune cell could get everywhere it needed to go without dead tissue being in their way, right. because the screw is a dead tissue. How did that go afterward? It, after about a month. It started to itch and burn, and I got real nervous, thought it was mm -hmm. coming back, but I think it was just healing. Yeah. And so since then, there has been no problem of that. Yeah, so meaning if an infection doesn't go, if the hardware is seeded, mm -hmm. in your case, and infection doesn't go away, the best way to do is take the hardware out. And we could safely do that because we did that surgery, what, two and a half years after the initial surgery, mm -hmm. and the bone was growing. Here it is. Um... This is where we did the surgery. These are the holes where the screws used to be. They are removed and bone is beautifully growing. And look at that solid bone. 
okay and but unfortunately this is not your only problem right. look at that this this here is trying to grow over it all, all by itself look at that bone is growing in the wrong place pushing on the nerve and as well look at your sacroiliac joint mm -hmm. there you have two more problems and uh, in a way here is the if you don't mind to hold it for me this is where we did the surgery mm -hmm. You have problem here, but as well you have problem in the sacral reaction. We know that if you get a fusion here, or if you have spine problem here, there is, you are compared to other population, regular folk, you are 35% more likely to have problem in other levels, above and below. Mm -hmm. And we know as well that if you have a spinal fusion or spine problem like that, you are 43% of the time if you have lower back problem, the problem is sacral reaction. joint. No, you almost every time you hit the lottery, you know, you had the seeding of the hardware that's extremely rare mm -hmm. with no obvious event, which is a, just a freak kind of situation. But you have both sacroiliac problem and lumbar spine problem. So, um, how do you feel to have uh, been a lottery winner, winner <laughs> of the lottery? We talked one time um, about on the lower ones mm -hmm. if because they were starting to self self grow mm -hmm. if it were to a point where you'd actually have to break that yeah and and, and repair that yeah that's that's still an item of concern <laughs> yeah how is your life right now is it that do you think it's time for us to investigate it because we can investigate it to find out what is the problem now specifically in your case if the bottom discs are the problem or the sacroiliac joint problem we mm -hmm. The way to diagnose that is to stay away from the lumbar spine as far as possible and put certain amount of local anesthetic in this part of the joint here mm -hmm. to see while numb if 75% of the pain goes away. If yes, this is the problem, we would fix that first. But you have two problems, you know, literally, if this is the problem and in your case it's not a questionable, sometimes if it's questionable, we go with the needle inside and increase the pressure from inside that process called discogram to find out if that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, realistically, you have both problems, and uh, but the idea is which one should we fix first? Should we fix it at all? Is it is it bad enough that we should fix it? What do you think? Maybe not right at this point. So you still your life is still managed. Right. So we will just keep going. We do physical therapy. We support your back. But once the pain we say is seven, eight, nine every day, mm -hmm. that's the time to investigate and then treat specifically. Right. You know, um, now that the hardware has been out for a while, and like I said, with the removal mm -hmm. of the hardware, mobility has come back somewhat mm -hmm. to try and become a little bit more active and see what the tolerances are will be. Um, I don't believe the, the hardware removal has done change the mobility because bone is growing there. Hardware didn't really change that, but when we remove the hardware, we remove the infection, mm -hmm. we're removing the infection will make you just less symptomatic, less painful, right. and that will enable you to use those segments that are still mobile. Right. So you are absolutely right that the mobility is better without the hardware, mm -hmm. but that not nothing to do with the hardware being removed, rather than we removed an infection source and pain source now you can use the rest of the heart, uh, rest of your spine. Right. Okay. 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 Well, any other question or comment? No. I think we're good. So. Excellent. Thank you so much for the interview.